ecological restoration, peace building, care for a common home. Uh, and it's an incredible honor and delight to be here with the uh, directors, two of the three directors of Eco Peace Middle East, Gidon Bromberg and Nada Majalani. It's great to have you both with us. Let me, let me. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. Yeah, one... Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Nada. Thank you, Gidon. It's so great to have you back in World Unity Week. We took a step last year with Eco Peace uh, in World Unity Week, and it was so inspiring uh, and educational uh, for so many people. And of course, prior to that, in February 2020, um, with so many uh, leaders, we came and visited and you hosted us, uh, Unity Earth and partners, uh, almost 100 um, leaders, cultural leaders, spiritual leaders, musicians, artists, activists came to Palestine and Jordan and Israel. And it was definitely a life changing trip for so many of us. So we couldn't be more excited to be sitting down with you both again in World Unity Week. So let me tell just a little bit about our guest today. Uh, Nada Majalani is the Palestinian director of Eco Peace Middle East. Nada holds a, uh, a, a master's in environmental assessment and management from Oxford Brookes University in the UK and served in leading technical positions with several international agencies in the areas of infrastructure development, mainly water and sanitation, sustainable and clear production, as well as various tasks on institutional capacity building and policy advisory support. As a strong believer in the impact of proactive dialogue, she's been part of several affiliations of Palestine, uh, Palestinian Israel groups, including the One Voice Movement and the Palestinian Israel Young Entrepreneurs Forum. Nada has recently addressed the EcoPeace vision at various high level international platforms, including the UN Security Council, NATO and the Planetary Security Conference. Wow, Nada, such, a, such an impressive uh, <clears throat> resume and background. And Gidon Bromberg is the co-founder and 25-year Israeli director of EcoPeace Middle East. Mr. Bromberg has written extensively on the relationship between water issues and Middle East peace uh, and has presented before the UN Security Council, UN Climate Summit, US Congress, European Parliament and other international forums. Mr. Bromberg, an attorney by profession, is an alumni of Monash University in Australia, Washington College of Law at American University and Yale University's World Fellows program. Gidon is also a World Unity Week Ambassador 2021. So we're very, very honored to have you with us. Um, and extraordinary, the work that you are doing in the world. Our theme for World Unity Week this year is let's do something. And when we when we when we brought that uh, along Nada and get on it was really you and eco peace that were front of mind, because you are champions uh, and heroes on the front line of doing something in let's be honest what's probably the most challenging uh, cultural political religious environmental context on the planet and certainly when you put them all together. Uh, and the work of almost 30 years now of building networks and building trust and building programs and um, connections across those three uh, states in the Middle East, Palestine, Israel and Jordan. And now to see Eco Peace's work spreading around the world. And another thing that's so uh, powerful about you having you in World Unity Week is our theme right throughout the, the week is water. And so we started with water blessing uh, and water is running the whole way through uh, and looking at the importance in a sense, Nada and Gidon, there's a general will for people to come together, but there's also a sense of, well, what are we uniting for when we come together? What are we, what are we coming together for? So we know that you have some very concrete, grounded, practical, um, sustainable solutions to these very challenging issues, um, environmental and others in the Middle East. And this idea of really coming together around water, which was very much um, part of the strategy uh, that we learned from EcoPeace. So, we're very, very excited and honored to have you with us. And I'm going to throw it over to you, Nada, to begin the presentation. Thank you, Ben. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen shortly. And um, I hope it's clear for everyone. Yes? Okay, so thank you, Ben, for the wonderful introduction and uh, 
Um, absolutely, we're thrilled that we are part of the uh, World Unity Week uh, presenting our Green Blue Deal uh, concept uh, for the Middle East, uh, which uh, very much is focused on uh, water security and water issues uh, at the hard core of this concept. Um, and particularly also addresses what can we do together, what can um, we achieve uh, by working together and coming together uh, to address uh, one of the most pressing issues uh, in the region in terms of uh, water security and energy security uh, in light of uh, climate change and the geopolitical challenges. So um, what Ecopeace uh, has uh, proposed in December to 2020 is a concept of a green blue deal for the Middle East, uh, which was presented in our uh, and launched in our annual conference last year. Um, and it's uh, basically um, uh, driven by uh, the experience of EcoPeace over the past 26 years of environmental peace building at several uh, levels. Uh, the uh, bottom-up uh, approach, which is focused on uh, engaging with communities and youth and, um, and uh, uh, community leaders, and the top-down approach, which is focused on uh, advocacy and working with policymakers to advocate for policy change. So uh, in that sense, we um, we developed this um, this uh, concept of four main pillars, uh, and we uh, basically focused on this uh, concept as a climate change adaptation and mitigation approach, which would ensure that the three countries of Palestine, Israel, and Jordan have the appropriate mechanisms to address. Uh, uh, the challenges that would come out of climate change, uh, but also uh, a concept that would go broader to the uh, Middle East region, uh, including other uh, watersheds and basins and other conflict areas in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, where they can also learn from the approach of EcoPeace and its mechanisms. So uh, when we proposed um, uh, this uh, initiative, we've had uh, also uh, a huge international support, and I will come uh, to this next uh, in into the slides and to the presentation. But why have has ECOPI started acknowledging and addressing these issues and putting uh, climate change in the framework of, of, uh, of regional security? Uh, it's very evident uh, from uh, several studies that uh, water insecurity uh, and areas of uh, uh, that are facing c conflicts and challenges uh, are basically also water scarce. And it is very evident from, from the slides here um, uh, in, in, in the hotspots uh, uh, over the Middle East and North Africa, uh, where we have conflicts related also to water issues. Um, and at a time where uh, the world is facing um, the, the uh, risk of increased uh, temperature by uh, one uh, to two Celsius uh, degrees, uh, the Middle East is actually uh, going to be facing challenges of uh, approximately four Celsius degrees uh, increase in temperature by the end of the century. So what we're seeing is a potential um, uh, threat multiplier uh, to regional security uh, as, as uh, climate change impacts are hitting our region. But uh, in our concept as EcoPeace, we're trying to look at uh, climate change as a, as a different derivative uh, rather than a risk multiplier, but we're looking at it as, a, um, as an opportunity multiplier to basically bring people together to work and to address the upcoming challenges. Similarly, when we speak about climate change impacts to, uh, to um, uh, basically um, uh, the temperatures, we're also speaking about shifts in uh, uh, shifts in the seasons and the raining seasons. And this is a slide uh, from, the, um, uh, from the Tel Aviv University, um, which uh, basically presents uh, the projections of um, uh, longer summer seasons and dry seasons and shorter winter seasons 
which would definitely affect not only the water uh, recharge and supply, but will also affect uh, food security in a region that is uh, heavily dependent and very much dependent on uh, historically on agricultural uh, activity as part of the cultural and societal mosaic uh, in the region, particularly uh, also for uh, the region of the Jordan Valley, uh, which is uh, basically considered as the uh, food basket uh, of the region. But when we look at all these factors, we look at also the interconnectedness of, inter, uh, of, um, of environmental issues and environmental values. And as we can see here from the slide, um, many of the uh, watersheds and the uh, uh, streams are basically having a transboundary nature, not to mention uh, also, or not to forget mentioning um, uh, uh, the Jordan River system, including also the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. Um, uh, similarly, also the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, when we think of the interconnectedness and the shared risk of climate change impacts, we also think of uh, situations with, which we have come across um, uh, in Gaza Strip, where basically um, energy insecurity and water insecurity had cross-border effects. Uh, this is a photo from 2017 showing this red uh, material, which is uh, basically raw sewage uh, and chlorophyll and organic matter uh, traveling north from Gaza Strip um, due to untreated sewage uh, towards the north, uh, polluting Israeli beaches and causing the closure of desalination plants uh, in Israel, which 15% uh, of uh, the drinking water of Israel depends on these desalination plants. And the reason why Gaza is unable to treat its own sewage is because of the lack of infrastructure, um, a blockade over Gaza for a approximately 15 years, um, which also uh, does not enable the improvement of infrastructure in Gaza and treating the sewage properly. So it shows that um, some policies, um, either internal policies or, or cross-border policies from one side to another, has uh, basically drastic implications um, uh, trans uh, on a transboundary level. And this shows how political borders do not actually uh, represent uh, what actually means in terms of environmental impact because environmental damage does not recognize political uh, borders. So in that sense, the first aspect that we present as an organization is um, a, a, a concept that promotes for interdependency and exchanging renewable energy with desalinated water uh, from the Mediterranean Sea uh, between Palestine, Israel and Jordan, which would present a, a form of um, uh, water and energy security, climate change adaptation and mitigation measure uh, but also uh, comes with uh, high uh, uh, geopolitical benefits where uh, Israel, uh, Israel, Palestine and Jordan will uh, achieve uh, some sort of uh, interest for stability in terms of energy and water security, integration with the Arab world and uh, potentially achieving uh, uh, trust building measures between the parties. And this doesn't come out of, um, uh, out of nothing, but we have studied the experience of the European Union in terms of the uh, post-World War II agreement of the coal and steel, which um, emerged after uh, a lot of, of sorrow, sorrows and sadness and bloodshed um, and has actually capitalized on uh, the two main uh, strong resources of Europe, which are the coal and steel, but we're here depending in the region of the most important sources, which are the sun and the sea in the Middle East to achieve uh, the security that we aspire all. Um, 
And this is definitely doable and achievable because if we see, uh, if we look at the development of uh, of, of uh, water production from non-conventional sources such as desalination, we see that Israel is a leading uh, um, uh, a party and leading country uh, aiming to double um, and, and or actually uh, triple the uh, the production of uh, desalination uh, by 2050. Uh, and this would uh, actually add to the uh, and will increase the pie of water availability in the region, which would enable uh, uh, Israel, but similarly also Palestine, to um, uh, to uh, export uh, water uh, to Jordan uh, in exchange of renewable energy produced in Jordan back uh, to Israel and Palestine. And this technically addresses the water security issues, especially in Palestine and Jordan, uh, particularly due to intermittent water supply. Uh, and if we uh, see uh, several communities uh, in, in Palestine, they receive water in the summer season only uh, once or twice uh, from the tap uh, or from the network and uh, other times they have to purchase uh, the water by uh, from private suppliers and tankers with heavy prices similarly this is the situation in in, in jordan and irbid uh, in amman and irbid uh, of highly populated areas uh, and and um, uh, and similarly, this needs to be addressed in terms of out of the uh, of the box uh, um, uh, concepts such as our water energy nexus. Uh, but also, we have between the Palestinian and Israeli side the uh, issue of transboundary um, uh, water streams, which are uh, also generally uh, polluted by uh, raw sewage. Uh, and also this needs to be addressed uh, in particular solutions on both sides, which also requires a lot of political will. And this is exactly where Ecopeace comes in and jumps into the concept of resolving water and sanitation issues as a priority and putting this uh, priority on the table of the politicians. Um, given that over the past 25 or 26 years after the Oslo Accords, which were supposed to be interim, water issues have been held hostage with other difficult files, such as the refugees, the uh, political borders, the uh, illegal settlements, um, and, and the, the, the issue of Jerusalem. Uh, and the, uh, hence, when we look at the pressing issue of water and sanitation in the region in light of climate change, there needs to be a shift in the paradigm and there needs to be a serious discussion among uh, political leaders to resolve these issues as a priority. Uh, why we also care about this is because of the third pillar of our um, uh, um, uh, Green Blue D uh, concept, uh, which is a topic very uh, uh, close to our hearts, which is the revival and the restoration of the Jordan River and the protection of the Dead Sea, which is being demised uh, due to climate change, but also due to man-made um, uh, reasons. Um, and therefore, we have um, uh, we have looked at the Jordan River uh, as a sacred river. Speaking here, that uh, we're at the World Unity Week, we have uh, we have a special uh, also consideration that this holy river to half of humanity is being demised and is being converted into uh, simply a stream of uh, polluted. Um, uh, stream with with sewage and agricultural wastewater. So in, in that sense, and because we care, we have developed a regional master plan for the Jordan River Basin, not only for the uh, protection of the uh, Jordan River, but also to address the economic prosperity and stability of the region in Palestine, Israel, and Jordan by providing a master plan which would shift the economy of the Jordan River or the Jordan Valley from a 4 billion US dollars to a 73 billion US dollars, including infrastructure projects, but also other projects that could be led and driven by the private sector. 
The final pillar that we're working on is very also um, close to our hearts, which is the educational part and the raising of awareness on environmental issues and transboundary environmental issues among our youth. We have a large scale flagship program, which is the Good Water Neighbors, engaging thousands of uh, youth, uh, including school uh, children, teachers, uh, water diplomats and professionals and green social entrepreneurs. Similarly, we work with community leaders and municipality um, uh, leaders to address and to push forward our agenda to the political leaders that something needs to be done on ground. And finally, as I mentioned, we have had, uh, we've gained a lot of political support uh, and international support. This is uh, Yana, our Jordanian director, me and Gidon um, uh, in the UN Security Council after our presentation. And uh, with uh, also with our champion for the Green Blue Deal, the Finnish Prime uh, Foreign Minister Pekka Havisto. Um, which who's taken the lead to basically uh, um, uh, and taken the championship to promote for our Green Blue Deal uh, amongst his peers internationally. And I think I, I would leave that to uh, to Gidon and, and to myself uh, further when we speak uh, about international engagement and what can be done. I will leave it there. Thank you so much. I'm sorry if I took so long, I'll stop sharing my screen. That was wonderful, Nada. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that uh, uh, presentation and that information, very informative. And we're able to get a, a very good idea of the context of uh, not only the challenges, but the solutions that you're working to. So Nada Maj Dalini, thank you so much. And uh, Gidon Bromberg, over to you. So thank you, Ben, and thank you, Nada, for that great um, uh, introduction there on on really what the what the green blue deal is all about and and it, it really highlights that we do, that we mustn't accept the status quo um that the, the climate crisis that we all face um will make life unlivable for all of us in the region and that um although you know some countries israel uh, uh, perhaps having a, a, a higher wealth and and technology that um, uh, uh, can help overcome some of the challenges, but as Nada showed from the outset, um, when one neighbor uh, fails for whatever, for whatever whatever reason, there are implications on the region as a whole, and uh, uh, that's relevant not only to the Middle East countries, but that's, that's relevant to the broader world. And we saw that in Syria when you know the um, uh, uh, the uprising, the civil uprising uh, takes place there. We see millions of refugees moving everywhere, including to Europe, um, out of uh, uh, desperation for their uh, survival and their, for their livelihood. So that rather than climate, the climate crisis, the crisis taking us down that direction of further conflict, um, as Nada highlighted, um, we have in fact the opportunity, the necessity, um, to move forward on uh, this uh, green uh, blue deal highlighting the word blue because of the importance of water issues uh, uh, to our region um, uh, his excellency uh, uh, the foreign minister of finland as nada mentioned pekka harvester has already taken on a, a championship role um, in this effort and speaking to various foreign ministers uh, from around the region but um, uh, the conversation I think that, that we'd like to have over this next half hour is, is how can we further move this forward? And how can participants listening uh, to us live today or, or, or later um, uh, by uh, video, how can you uh, be involved in assisting us um, to bring uh, the Middle East from the brink of crisis to a, a, a new dawn, a dawn of climate resilience and through cr uh, climate resilience, as we've outlined in this proposal, we also move forward the two state solution between Israelis and Palestinians, um, but in a manner that really speaks to integration region wide. Um, our Green Blue Deal is currently 
focused uh, as Nada presented on Israel, Palestine and Jordan, but we are working with other civil society organizations that are focused um, on, in other areas of the Middle East. So um, we're working with partners in the Euphrates Tigris Basin, and um, uh, we're going to be developing a green blue deal uh, with them uh, uh, on Tigris uh, Euphrates. And we'll also be focusing on the Gulf and, and particularly the ability of the Gulf to uh, invest and help support um, some of these uh, projects uh, of the Green Blue Deal that Nada mentioned, relevant um, to the Jordan uh, uh, Basin, but also to the Euphrates Tigris Basin. So that we, we're not working in a silo fashion, we're truly developing a, uh, a model um, very much inspired by uh, the Europeans, the European Green Deal, which uh, is going to set Europe to be the very first um, uh, continent on earth um, to have an integrated plan uh, to, uh, uh, to move forward on climate resilience uh, in Europe and uh, equally inspire, inspired by uh, the Biden administration in the United States, um, uh, who's really taken on uh, the climate uh, issue as a, as a number one issue um, uh, to, to bring uh, forth to the international community and to support uh, inter, inter, international cooperation over. Um, we have a, uh, uh, some new opportunities also uh, in the region itself with the uh, uh, appointment of a new government in Israel. And uh, we, we can already see from the statements made from uh, various ministers in Israel and, uh, and meetings that we've already had held with uh, 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 one of the ministers to date and uh, other meetings planned for next week, um, uh, we see tremendous interest. We see the new foreign minister of Israel, uh, Lapid, um, uh, being outspoken that the climate crisis is a priority issue um, that uh, uh, the new government in Israel is, is keen to advance. So that's an opportunity uh, to build on. Uh, we, all, we also see uh, various levels of interest from our governments on all four of uh, these initiatives from um, uh, uh, former Palestinian officials and Palestinian experts. We're hoping uh, to, to continue to create the political will needed uh, towards the rehabilitation of the Jordan River and uh, the Dead Sea. Um, so so what, are the, what are some of the, uh, the measures that uh, uh, people in the audience uh, can, can do? So we're trying to create a coalition of the willing, a coalition of foreign ministers, of climate ministers, of environment ministers, from uh, around the world to support, to endorse um, uh, the Green Blue Deal and help create uh, the needed political will that brings together our governments um, directly from the region. Um, so that uh, uh, you know, people listening uh, to, to this effort, we're looking to partner. We're looking uh, to see how you might be able to raise your, your voice if you're in the United States with members of Congress, if you're in Europe with your respective uh, parliaments and elsewhere around the world, to try to encourage uh, to get the message out that there is a blue plan um, uh, for climate resilience, climate um, uh, mitigation and adaptation for the Middle East that can bring, that can start to move the, re the region forward towards peace and prosperity. Um, and we think that that is of mutual interest for everyone across the planet. Certainly a key issue um, of unity earth, of, 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 of this gathering um, uh, uh, globally that's taking place uh, this week. Um, and, and therefore our call is to uh, uh, approach us, um, you know, speak to us about how um, uh, you might be able to share uh, you know, the, the report, the Green Blue Deal that we've published, uh, videos that, that we've prepared with decision makers in your own country so that foreign ministers, climate ministers, environment ministers, 
from around the world um, can uh, support uh, this endeavor so that we so that we actually create a coalition of the, of, of the willing what we're hoping um, uh, is uh, we've, we've, we're putting our um, our target uh, uh, on Glasgow the the next uh, meeting of the international community um, on the uh, uh, climate uh, convention now that will take place in uh, November in the city of Glasgow in Scotland um, uh, we're hoping that that uh, we'll be able to organize a round table that will involve uh, decision makers from our uh, respective uh, governments and come out with a statement uh, uh, where our own governments and the international community can become vocal in support of moving forward on a green blue deal for the Middle East. Um, uh, we see um, uh, tremendous interest uh, from uh, the Biden administration and from uh, the European uh, Union already to date. Um, we've had uh, fantastic conversations with uh, uh, senior members in the State Department. We've had um, uh, very good conversations with ambassadors uh, from uh, uh, all of the major European states to our region and their respective foreign ministries. Um, they very much appreciate the out-of-the-box thinking that we're here presenting of the climate crisis uh, becoming um, a potential entry point a multiplier of opportunities, as Nada had said um, earlier, rather than a threat multiplier, which is uh, how the crisis is currently seen uh, in, in the Middle East. So um, I, I would be delighted, um, uh, Ben, to, to take things back uh, to the floor and, and perhaps open up uh, to uh, further comments and questions. Um, uh, uh, I know also Nada has perspectives on Palestine that, that you would want to share, and, and both of us can also share some perspectives uh, from Jordan, uh, given that, um, unfortunately, Yana Abu Talib, our Jordanian director, uh, had to, uh, was taken uh, for a, a, a really important meeting and is, isn't, uh, isn't able to uh, participate um, this afternoon. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Gidon. <clears throat> Excellent. And let me just read some of the accolades that are coming in for this Green-Blue Deal. Uh, the Green-Blue Deal uh, shows valuable proposals for building trust on the basis of the water energy nexus, uh, which, is a, a pr uh, which is an existing uh, EcoPeace uh, uh, project. And this is important also because of the commitment by Israel, the PA and Jordan to transition to renewable energy. They have a shared interest in working together on climate adaption. It has potential to be a win, win, win. That was from Susanna Tersal, the EU Special Representative for the Middle East Peace Process. Um, His Excellency Daniel Shapiro, uh, former US Ambassador to Israel, said this, there are many opportunities to take the ideas of the Green Blue Deal, apply them to this principle that the Biden administration comes in with, which is keeping two states alive and viable shortening the distance between the next negotiations launch and that outcome. So certainly a, a very high level accolades that uh, the green blue deal, the blue green deal is getting. Um, His Excellency Eric Ullenhag for the Swedish ambassador to Israel said, the sunshine and the wind give the opportunity for this region to actually be self sustainable when it comes to renewable energy, to be leaders in renewable energy. I know that EcoPeace is working on it finding ways to make exporting from one country the energy, renewables, and getting water in return as a way of building bridges. It's brilliant, it's simple, it makes sense, it's profound visionary work, Nada, and Gidon that you're doing. Nada, would you share with us a little bit, perhaps, as Gidon was um, uh, suggesting a little bit about from the Palestinian perspective, maybe now with uh, political winds of change in Israel, uh, anything, um, anything uh, you know, you'd like to share from what's been shared so far? Uh, certainly, uh, Ben. We've, uh, we've, in terms of the energy sector, we've been struggling over the past years to achieve our targets and goals to to reach out to the ten percent uh, renewables in our energy uh, consumption. 
uh, and especially with uh, the various difficulties uh, to achieve this on ground, whether it's uh, from institutional capacity, whether it's from the grid capacity uh, and infrastructure capacity, uh, or even the incentives that are uh, not very uh, incentivizing for the private sector to go uh, into investing in, in renewables. Uh, and not to mention also the geopolitical aspects of uh, land restrictions uh, in the West Bank by Israel to construct uh, uh, and to, to build renewable energy facilities. So all these impediments, I think, uh, they uh, very much uh, affect our ability to reach our target uh, of the 10% by 2030. Uh, and, and the only way around is to uh, achieve some sort of energy security is to uh, um, uh, keep pushing, of course, the national agenda, but also to achieve diversification of our energy sources uh, from Jordan. Um, this will also gradually uh, delve into the national aspiration of reducing dependence of the Palestinians uh, on renewables or on energy sources from Israel, which is approximately 96% uh, of our energy is uh, basically imported and, and, uh, and coming from Israel. In that sense, it makes uh, financial sense, it makes geopolitical sense uh, to diversify our energy sources from the Jordanian side. On the water side also, if we achieve energy uh, water security in Gaza, it is also very much in the interest of, um, uh, of the Palestinian Authority. Um, and in that sense, by uh, putting and uh, the, the proposed uh, desalination plants, the large scale ones, as part of a regionally integrated plan for improving water security will make things easier to improve on ground. Um, and in that sense also, uh, would uh, not only create a trust building measure, uh, where things improve on ground, but would also uh, enable increasing the uh, water pie, as Gidon mentioned, uh, to enable basically uh, resuming some political talks over uh, reallocating natural water resources, which is basically in the interest of the Palestinians to gain their uh, um, uh, just and fair water rights from natural water resources. And in that sense, um, we are seeing some shift in also the mentality of Palestinian politicians and Palestinian experts who have very much opposed the ECOPIS proposal uh, for the uh, prioritizing of negotiation, negotiations on water in 2012 and 2015. Today, with the pressing issue of climate change, we are seeing that this, those same experts and politicians who were opposing us are now calling for uh, prioritizing negotiating on water. So this is also an opportunity for us as ECOPIS to uh, promote deeper our Green Blue Deal concepts uh, within our uh, national uh, stakeholders. Um, and I think this comes right at, at a time where also um, there's there's a shift in uh, and change uh, in the international uh, uh, basically political atmosphere uh, with the um, Biden administration coming back on board uh, in the Palestinian uh, Israeli conflict uh, file and uh, regaining uh, some of the uh, communications with the Palestinian Authority and the U.S. administration after four years of, uh, we call it the dark ages of, uh, of the Trump administration. Uh, so we see definitely here a great opportunity uh, on the changing currents uh, of the political atmosphere, which we can capitalize on. If I could add uh, to, to Nada's important uh, comments there that speak to progress uh, and change of mindsets on the on the Palestinian side, similar change of mindsets also on the Israeli side. So we completed our water energy nexus study in 2017, and I presented uh, the idea of Israel uh, purchasing renewable energy from Jordan. There was a lot of skepticism uh, coming from uh, officials. 
um, there'd been actually a, a poor experience where Egypt uh, was selling uh, natural gas to power uh, power stations in both Israel and Jordan, and those pipelines selling, uh, providing that natural gas uh, were being blown up and, and uh, leading to tremendous interruptions of, of electricity supply um, to both the Israeli and Jordanian market. So, uh, you know, so a lot of skepticism uh, you know, originally back in 2017, well, why should Israel be dependent on a neighbor? Um, look at the bad experience that, uh, that we'd seen in the past with um, you know, basically um, you know, a terrorist acts blowing up uh, pipelines uh, in the Sinai. Um, but uh, today and, and over, over this last year, um, as the climate crisis has come home, uh, as, as in the sense that um, uh, uh, much due to uh, you know, the Biden administration's leadership here in, in, in bringing high commitments to the table again, um, we've seen the government of Israel move from originally just a 17% commitment uh, of renewables by uh, 2030 to a 30% commitment by uh, 2030 and 100% renewable uh, uh, electricity supply by 2050. That changed uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the whole nature of our, of our uh, program with the Ministry of Energy. Uh, because the Ministry of Energy uh, uh, team of experts concluded that Israel doesn't have the land mass where it could produce such uh, large quantities of renewable energy. And therefore, um, uh, uh, the, the notion of buying renewable energy from a neighbor, and particularly from Jordan, becomes an issue of self-interest, becomes an issue um, of, of, uh, of uh, perhaps the only way to meet um, uh, the commitments to the uh, to the Paris uh, Accords, and of course um, the other really attractive aspect uh, of the water energy nexus aspect of the Green Blue Deal is that that this is this can all be led by the private sector. That the advances in technology of of both uh, renewables, wind and solar, are profitable. Uh, in fact, you know, in our part of the sunny, in our part of the world, which is so sunny, um, the production of electricity during the day is cheapest by harnessing the sun. It's already cheaper than any other type of, of uh, fossil fuel, coal, oil, or gas. So the economic incentive is also there. Also on, on desalination, um, it's private sector led. It's a profitable uh, concern. The technology has, has improved to such a degree that where you know, 15 years ago, the cost of desalinating uh, seawater was about two dollars a cubic meter it's dropped to uh, you know under 50 cents to in fact 44 cents is the latest tender uh, in israel and only two and a half cents for a kilowatt hour uh, on solar uh, out, out of jordan so um this is also important because we're, it means that our region is able to move forward on these issues without having to seek you know the generosity and donations from the international community. That this can be uh, uh, done uh, through uh, firm investments uh, from the international, from uh, private sector players from around the world. And here, um, you know, the Arab Gulf uh, states uh, uh, can become an important player of investing, of having uh, their investment arms invest in uh, renewable energy and desalination in our part of the world to move forward. Uh, 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 water and energy uh, security. So, so you know, we do see. I mean, we don't want to be over optimistic, and and you know, the Middle East is known for you know, moving forward one step and then going back two steps. Um, uh, but but at, at this current moment, we certainly have a plan that's attracted tremendous interest, not only by governments, uh, uh, not only by local communities, but by the private sector. Um, who see uh, the potential of large, uh, profitable uh, investments to, to continue to move this forward. And um, uh, we see a, you know, a, a changing uh, uh, political uh, uh, paradigm of, 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 of clearly, first of all, the new government, um, the Biden administration in the US, and most recently, as of just last week, uh, the new government uh, in Israel.
So, so Ben, um, um, back back to you. And I, I don't know whether we have uh, any, we do, any time we do, for we... any questions. Or... Yeah, excellent. Get on, excellent. I mean, I'm I'm just so struck by the by the the incredible in a relatively short time since the green blue deal uh, has uh, been really uh, un, unveiled. Even here's Jeremy Rifkin, uh, who was, a, a, as I understand it, um, uh, a contributor to the Green New Deal. The New York Times bestselling author and economist saying there is an opportunity here for these three countries to be a bellwether and first mover to show the Middle East what's possible when three countries can come together in eco peace and establish a local approach to power. They seem they say, these experts seem to think you're onto something here, Gidon uh, and Nada, and of course Yana, who can't be with us today. But uh, this is a, a, a whole eco peace. Uh, initiative and collaboration, but you're getting incredible accolades, uh, uh, and I can understand your cause for optimism. And another thing I wanted to uh, presence too is just water again uh, at the heart of the 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 uh, green blue deal, um, water and energy, um, but water and the, and the collaboration we have still here with us, uh, Father Jostrom from the um, from the Dicaster in the Vatican, and tomorrow at this time, uh, Gidon, you'll be one of a number of representatives talking on a panel for water first, a policy, global policy, water first. And what's fascinating about the panel tomorrow uh, is you have Aboriginal representatives, uh, Dr. Anne Paulina from here in Australia, spiritual and religious leaders, uh, Sadvi Bhagawati, who is in the, 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 in the Ganga uh, region in uh, India. You have from the Dicastery, from the Vatican, you have Dr. Tibaldo Vinci Guerra, uh, we have Robert F. Kennedy Jr., uh, Dr. Shelley Ostroff, Ambassador Musi Hailu, Linda Tucker. Uh, it's an extraordinarily diverse group um, that's coming together with a common message. Uh, and the message is water is at the heart of uh, what's bringing us together across all these spaces. So once again, EcoPeace, we just admire you so much, the work that you've done, the strategy and the heart coming together um and uh it's uh it's an inspiration we want to find out before we close what we can do to help but there is a question in the chat which one of you may want to one one of you might want to take which is which possible representatives at the round table in glasgow would help you to have a breakthrough could have you what could help you yes so so i'm, I'm happy to take that on um, uh, at the climate summit in uh, the Conference of the Parties in Glasgow, um, you're going to see climate ministers uh, come together, you're going to see foreign ministers, and you're going to see environment ministers. Um, in, in one of the days, we're probably going to see presidents and prime ministers as well. So you know, the, the conference takes place over a two-week period. Various ministers will be involved, and on, 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 on uh, one of the days, uh, in, the, in the second week, There'll be the prime ministers and presidents of the world. Um, our, our focus is to get uh, the either the foreign minister or the climate minister um, of particularly uh, 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 influential states uh, to the Middle East uh, uh, region. So, you know, Europe, um, uh, North America, the G7 uh, countries. And the, the G7 countries, uh, in fact, uh, launched... A, a new initiative uh, uh, the week before last, um, when when they met in uh, in the UK, they, let, they launched a new initiative called the Clean and Green Initiative, and that initiative uh, is identifying projects like uh, the Green Blue Deal, like the Water Energy Nexus, to be endorsed by the G7 uh, for support. Um, uh, so uh, the UK is considering uh, our water energy project as a uh, uh, as a project to be chosen by the G7. Um, so everyone there in the audience that um, uh, uh, is a, a, a citizen of a G7 uh, country, you know, the most industrialized countries in the world, um, uh, can can really help us by sharing our information. We shared on the uh, chat uh, the link to the Green Blue Deal report um, uh, so that you can read uh, uh, in further detail. Nada and I uh, uh, will share uh, our email addresses as well if, if people would like to touch base with us in order to, to move this forward. And indeed, I, I very much look forward to tomorrow's talk uh, 
uh, where I'll have the, uh, the short opportunity, I think it's only um, five to seven minutes each, but to delve deeply into what does water first mean uh, in particularly the Israel-Palestine context and how that can really be uh, a game changer, how that can help build trust uh, by simply having more water in everyone's homes and less sewage polluting our scarce, our already scarce water resources. How, what a change um, uh, more water can mean to uh, livelihoods and quality of life of people uh, across the region and how that can really uh, become the impetus of trust building, of, uh, of, of then moving forward on the other final status issues so that we can create a state of Palestine living side by side uh, uh, in peace with the state of Israel and an integrated uh, 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 region that, that, that brings together all of the basin state um, of, the, of the Jordan River uh, Valley. Back to you, Ben. Wonderful. Thank you, Gidon. And, and, and are there any, um, any comments from you as we start to come towards the end of it? We do have a member of your international board here, of course, being uh, Rabbi Abraham Sotendorp, and we'd love to get uh, Rabbi uh, Sotendorp's reflections before we do close. But um, perhaps, uh, perhaps Nada, just prior, prior to hearing from uh, Rabbi Abraham, any uh, final comments from yourself? Well, I, th I think um, uh, we've, we've covered most of the issues, uh, Gidon and I, and uh, uh, certainly uh, we're very much thankful for the continued uh, cooperation and partnership with Unity Earth uh, over the uh, past couple of years. And we hope that uh, this continues on and on to spread the word of uh communing and uh, and coming together to address important issues uh to humanity uh first of all and to the region um and uh thank you indeed and we look forward uh, many more events and uh, and and partnerships and successes to together so thank you indeed and uh, certainly would love to hear more from uh, uh, father Abraham uh it, it's a pleasure that he's always present with us and we're very very proud uh, that we have such uh, a great uh, uh, collection of, of of people and uh, and supporters across the globe uh, either directly through the international advisory committee of echo peace uh, from the us and europe uh, but also um, uh, great supporters um, around the globe uh, who believe in us and who keep uh, spreading the word. Um, and I believe uh, for those who are listening to us here, please do subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, um, encourage people to learn about us and to, of course, donate to Echo Peace uh, through our website or elsewhere. Um, we, are, we come with a, a wide range of, uh, of activities. Our portfolio uh, ranges, from, as you've seen, from education to advocacy to uh, even installations of uh, small scale uh, solutions at community level. We've uh, just finished a fantastic project at uh, an UNRWA school in Gaza. Uh, serving 2,500 students, uh, providing them with fresh water for drinking and a sustainable source of energy by renewables. Um, there's a lot that we're doing on ground, so do please uh, spread the word and uh, keep supporting us uh, morally, uh, uh, spreading the word and financially. <laughs> so uh, I give the floor to Father Abraham. Maybe he has much more to say about EcoPeace from an external point of view. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nada. Uh, Rabbi Abraham, let's, there you are. Um, well, Nada and Gidon, it's, it's always so inspiring for the people who hear it for the first time, that for me, who has been with you, and get on from the very beginning and to see how this energy of just one person believing I, I remember you as a youngster 
just, and I brought you a voice to a, to a gathering and I saw the skepticism uh, and it is possible. And when, and, and when we see it's the, the, the real, maybe most important sign of hope in this conflict between right and right. And I, I always, and, 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 and water that unites and the sun energy that is exported and shared, it's just an example of what we need on a large scale all over the world. So I, 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 I wish that uh, uh, the, the ministers will come together because they can learn to work together, uh, it, you know, the cooperation. And um, uh, just to finally, I, I was there at the Dead Sea and um, when religious leaders came together and from, from the Palestinian side, the Jewish side, I still feel the embrace and the tears of joy. And that was the real Israel and the real Palestine. That was the future. So let us plant the future into the present. Very powerful, very powerful words to finish. Um, very powerful words to finish. And just, just in the last moments um, before we close, because we've been talking with Rabbi Abraham, he's been sharing his very inspirational vision, Nada and Gidon for um, what, what he's calling a holy decade, the 2020s. Of course, we have the SDGs and there are many groups that are orientating around this decade. Uh, it feels like it's um, one of ultimate significance in so many different ways. And speaking to you, Gidon and Nada, as an organization that's coming up to almost 30 years on, um, is this decade something around which you're orientating or is your timeline much shorter than that? Uh, let's just share with us a little bit about the future for EcoPeace. And I'm just thinking here, get on, where's EcoPeace going to be in 30 years from now? Uh, when For those you know, humble beginnings to where you are now. But just the next 10 years, is that something that you're orientating yourself around? So, so um, it's, a, it's a good question. And we are actually, EcoPeace um, uh, runs by five-year strategies. And we are completing our current uh, five-year a strategy at the end of this year, and we're working uh, already on our next five-year strategy. And so we're asking the question: you know, so what do we want to be? What do we want to do when we grow up? Um, we think that um, uh, you know, the timeline is short. Time is not in our in our favor. Certainly, the climate crisis every day that we fail to act, get you know uh, uh, fossils out of the system. Is a day we lose, is, is a day that we risk for Middle East security, for global security. So on the one hand, you know, time is not on our side. But on the other hand, we also well understand the change takes time, that, that, that we need uh, uh, also patience, um, that, that uh, you know, there's, there's interest at stake. We need to change uh, people's mindsets, their narratives. We need to open people's hearts. And that doesn't happen overnight. And, and I guess that's the conflict that, that all of us that are, that are the change makers uh, are facing. On the one hand, time is not on our side. We need to see these types of steps move forward yesterday with urgency. But we also appreciate that change happens slowly. Um, so so we're, 30, we're almost 30 years uh, you know, into our efforts. Um, we can speak with optimism because we have seen real change. Not enough. We're not satisfied, but we have seen real change of mindsets, improvements, um, you know, sewerage removed for where nothing but sewerage used to flow, fresh water being released where no fresh water was flowing for 50 years. Um, so, so we want to you know, instill in these, in these last words um, uh, optimism. That, that indeed peace is possible. Peace in the Middle East will happen. It's a matter of time and it's a matter of effort from all of us to make sure that it happens as soon as possible, but it's definitely gonna happen because we need it to happen. Mm. 
So if I can add uh, a couple of uh, short lines here, I think the Please. equipoise work will will never fade, uh, whether in the times of conflict or the time of peace. We will always be here and remain here. I mean, uh, whether tomorrow we strike a, a peace agreement between Palestine and Israel and resolve all the difficult issues, uh, Equipeace role will still be very, very much needed to, to keep things going on ground, uh, regardless of, uh, of, of the peace building aspect. There's still so much to be done uh, at the time of war and at the time of peace. Uh, and we'll still be here, so and we'll still grow. So uh, this is uh, this is where we are, and this is what we stand for. Wonderful, wonderful, Nada. Long live eco peace. Long live eco peace, and blessings and uh, strength and success for the Green Blue Deal. You are inspiring as always, Nada Majdalani, Gidon Bromberg. Thank you so much for being with us in World Unity Week. Eco peace. We'll get the links out. We'll promote this video far and wide and this incredible work that you are doing.